I would like to thank Yazda for inviting His Excellency Nejirvan Barzani, President of the Kurdistan region, to participate in this conference. It's an honor to join you today on His Excellency's behalf. President Barzani salutes all those who were killed in the genocide perpetrated by ISIS, especially the Yazidis and Christians. His Excellency offers his condolences and solidarity with you all. It's important that we remember the tragedies that took place, that we honor those who were killed and support those who survived so that all the components of our society can thrive and be at peace. The Kurdistan region welcomes the recent recognition of the Yazidi genocide by the Belgian and Dutch parliaments. Their conclusions were made thanks partly to evidence gathered by the United Nations investigative team to promote accountability for crimes committed by Daesh, UNITA. ISIS's brutal and systematic attacks against the Yazidis still shock us today. But beyond the shock, we must do our utmost to heal the wounds of the survivors, seek truth and justice for the victims, and find an, an inclusive and peaceful future for the next generation of Yazidis. We admire the Yazidis' resilience, which has helped the people of this ancient faith and culture to survive over the centuries with courage, unity, and a total commitment to their beliefs. But the trauma of genocide is a heavy burden that needs care and time to overcome. There is a need for moral support as well as providing material assistance, but most significantly, providing a sense of partnership that the Yazidis are equal partners in our country and that they deserve a better life. The Yazidis have expectations from all of us, especially after the Sinjar Agreement was signed. Its implementation remains an urgent duty that should be prioritized. We still have a large number of Yazidis missing close to 2,900. One third of Yazidis are in IDP camps in the Kurdistan region. Their homes, villages, and the city of Sinjar are destroyed and strewn with unexploded bombs and mines. More than 80 mass graves have been found that need to be exhumed and proper burials carried out for those who were killed. We need to address the Yazidis' immediate needs but also ensure they have a long-term, sustainable and secure future ahead of them. Part of that means putting our politics on the right track. We in the Kurdistan region believe in true and genuine partnership, and we support those in the federal government and parliament today who have the same goals. We also believe in sharing power and the devolution of authority. That's why we support calls for Sinjar to become a governorate so that the people of the area can manage their own affairs. We also support calls by the Christian community in the Nineveh Plain when they ask for self-administration and the locally sourced security force. A large number of the Yazidis who were abducted have been found or rescued, but there is yet a significant number who are still missing. There is an issue we need to work on together, to share intelligence and information on their whereabouts so that we can bring all of them back to the embrace of their families. A tragic dilemma facing the Yazidis is the case of children born to Yazidi women who were fathered by ISIS terrorists. This serious challenge has been an impediment faced by the women who wish to live with and register their children, while their families may not find this acceptable. We need to work together to address this socially, administratively, legally, and politically. We also need to work together to support the people 
who seven years after the genocide was committed are still displaced. While the Kurdistan regional government has done its best to provide for the displaced and refugee communities who count for one in six of our population, but it's not enough. About 70% of the cost of caring for them is borne by the KRG, while the rest is provided by international partners and NGOs. We are grateful for that assistance, but more is needed, especially at this time when we are living under the shadow of the pandemic. While the camps provide security to the displaced, they are vulnerable to fires and floods. Most of the camps were established as emergency, temporary shelters. Seven years later, they are inadequate. This makes the safe and dignified return of the IDPs to their homelands all the more necessary. We back any step that would bolster the stability and long-term sustainability of the Yazidis, Christians, Shabak, Kake, and other components who feel under threat. One of the biggest challenges facing all of us is rebuilding trust. Many Yazidis and Christians fear returning to their places of origin because often it was their neighbors who turned them over to ISIS or joined ISIS themselves. Rebuilding a sense of community, educating people across Iraq to accept each other and to live together in peace is ultimately the way forward. The KRG is improving our education curriculum so that children learn about different faiths, not only one specific religion. The KRG has also supported the building of Christian churches and Yazidi holy sites and has proactively promoted the principles of religious freedom and peaceful coexistence. Kurdistan region is ready to coordinate with Baghdad, with the governor of Nineveh, as well as with the Yazidi and Christian communities on the issue of security in Sinjar and across Nineveh. The Sinjar Agreement sets out a mechanism whereby all militias, Iraqi and foreign, would leave the area and the local security force be created from the Sinjari population. The Peshmerga and Iraqi security forces would provide protection as well. If successful, this formula could be rolled out in other parts of Nineveh and Iraq. However, we need the engagement of the United Nations Assistant Mission for Iraq, UNAMI, and all other agencies and donor countries. Cooperation between Erbil and Baghdad, as well as the United Nations and the coalition, is crucial to address the needs of the minorities and their aspiration. Many communities in Iraq have suffered genocide. Whether you are a victim of Saddam Hussein's Anfal genocide three decades ago, or a Yazidi who was the casualty and victim of ISIS crime, you seek justice and accountability. It's critical that Erbil and Baghdad work closely together and at the same time cooperate with UNITAD to bring the perpetrators to justice for genocide is an important part of the healing process. We welcome the successful prosecution of individuals in Germany and other countries. We also welcome the passing of the law on Yazidi survivors by the Iraqi parliament earlier this year. The law recognizes ISIS's violations against women and girls from the minorities as genocide and provides for reparations and compensation. We now look towards its full implementation. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as we mark this somber seventh anniversary of a monumental tragedy, we must acknowledge that while much has been done to support the Yazidi community, it's not enough. About 100,000 Yazidis have left Iraq altogether since 2014, and about 360,000 Yazidis have been displaced. 
to ensure they can return to Sinjar and have a sustainable and bright future in their own country, we must overcome political obstacles, avoid the traps of prejudice, and be tenacious in pursuing justice for the victims and a comprehensive peace for all of Iraq. Thank you very much indeed.